going? Because we can do the next poll. Yep, let's do it. Next poll. All right, here it comes. I've got a two, two questions going to come up to you now. Have you had your soil tested? Uh, specifically through the extension. Um, so the not. Extension, right. Yeah, yeah. And if you had an extension test, was the result useful? So um, go ahead and answer. And if you answer yes, go to that second question. And I think people are probably reading and processing the, uh, the choices here. Oh, and you know what, Brent is here. Brent, I'm sorry if you joined a minute ago and I did not see you, um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute and, uh, and, and join, join in. Perfect timing, Brent. Could not be better timing. Stephen left to take our grandson to the hockey arena and we've just uh, asked people whether or not they've had soil tested through the extension so that we can get an idea of how many people have been taking advantage of what you and I discussed and both feel it's a great deal, a wonderful deal. And I'm just gonna spotlight you as well. Brent, give me one second. So you guys should both be visible. Oh, do you know, uh, Brent, uh, uh, we, can't, I, we can't hear you. I can see you, I think there might be something up with your mic because Zoom thinks your mic is on and not hearing it. Well, it's a good time for people to be answering the questions. So we've got... Uh, all right. How about that? There he is. Hey. All right. Well, I, I was just saying I came on a few minutes earlier, and I'm glad I did because I learned several things from listening. So I, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. That's really nice of you to say. I think oh, we can... And logistically, I just want to jump in to say that we have a slightly uh, low response rate and possibly because uh, Stacy says you have to answer both questions in order to submit any answer. And the second question do, can't be answered if you haven't and so that's why we've got a slightly low result on the poll oh, about 37 percent i am sorry see sonia is better at doing polls than i am i didn't realize i had to do something like that okay. um anyway i will end and share results just now okay but what's nice to hear is that in, in the participants that we have here well over well over 50 percent have done an extension test and um and if they so stop i can't um my particular screen doesn't show what the second answer is then. So. Um, yep. So the second answer, hang on, let me just, uh, I just took a screenshot. So I will read those off for you one moment. Um, so the second one was 46% uh, says yes, they used the amendment, the recommendation. 11% um, said uh, they realized that pH or CEC is a big factor. 36% said they still guess when buying fertilizer. And 14% no, they expected more. Okay, great. Thank you very much, everybody, because that that helps. I, I'm sure I'm sure it helps Brent, who is an extension educator and often has to talk to people about their soil test results, because as much as we feel um, that they're great results and great information, if you're not used to looking at them, they may not be telling you what we think they're telling you. And that's why we asked that question. So there are some people who did an extension test and still looked at it and said, I don't understand this. I've had clients call us and say, I got my extension results exactly. What does this mean? So um, that's good to know and good for well, us. We, we, also, we also try to keep them simple to understand, but that doesn't mean that there's not a whole nother layer of questions. Like when people get into like micronutrients and things, we don't, we don't put a lot of information on there. So for people who wanna know more, were available. Yeah, and that's what's great about extension. I uh, I have had relatives move to states that don't have an extension in each county, and I think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I walked into an extension office not knowing that it wasn't for me in California and talked for half an hour with an extension uh, guy who then told me that he doesn't talk directly to consumers. <laughs> so oh, I'm sorry, uh, the soil service people let me in here. Um, so it's great to have someone to talk to about this stuff. So let, let, me, uh, let me run through what happens if you're doing a soil test on your own, as opposed to doing a soil test through the extension, just so we can do a little comparison. I've yeah, and I'll just do you a very quick time check that we're at 9.50. Oh, no. Okay, good. So <laughs> I've wanted for years to look at this, to, take your, to, to do these tests yourself. So I did test some of the same area that I tested for, through Michigan State through a uh, rapid test, where, um, again, 
I'm stuck with a wine glass instead of what I needed to do. With distilled water, my own soil, and uh, the rapid test, I'm making a soil solution and testing it. And the uh, pH in this particular one said that it was probably neutral or maybe toward alkaline. It said, look at it in the, in the sunlight. I said, yeah, in the sunlight, I can see that it's darker. It's more toward alkaline. So maybe that matches my 7.4 um, measured through the state. The potassium did say that it was light, which is why I've been putting bananas uh, and other things that are high in potassium. I make sure that those go out into the garden. Um, but the easiest ones were ones where I could, just like with Michigan State, I could take some soil, put it into, they give you a little container with distilled water in it, and uh, you can send them your soil test. And then they claim that they're going to give you a report that tells you what you can do, professional guidance on, on uh, how to use the results. I'll see when that comes in, what it is, how, how useful it is. But for Michigan State, I get, here's what I want, here's what you want to have, no, no phosphorus, 4% potassium, 1% nitrogen, if you apply that every year. Here are some fertilizers that you can look for. Um, and that's exactly for our soils and what I've said that I'm going to grow in our soils. Michigan State has well over 100 crops that they've got decades of experience um, fertilizing in these soils, telling you exactly what to do. Um, so I, I would still prefer that you get this kind of test than do the home tests. They also will give you links on your results to uh, fertilize bulletins on fertilizing and, and preparing soil that you can really use. Um, you can also buy some of these, and you know that's one of the, the drawbacks to buying things online is you get told to buy other things. I'd always wanted to try one of the meters, which I doubted works well. I said, okay, we'll try a meter. Distilled water to wet the soil, and uh, it says moisture is in the green, fertility is in the green. It doesn't tell me specifically what I'm going to use. But it told me my pH is five, and there's no way, absolutely no way, that their pH is five. So I'm throwing this meter out. Um, people ask, uh, can I test whether the toxins are present? You got to know exactly what you're testing for to test for a toxin, and no matter what you're testing for, it's going to cost a lot of money. So let's talk about correcting problems, and I will let people ask questions here, um, and we'll get into those questions that Lin Lin and uh, um, it, others, others had Mike and others had. I'm putting in a drain here in order to pull water away from a, a, well, an area that's too wet. We put in a surface drain here to take this extra water coming off of the neighbor's property and bring it down to an area where we can make a rain garden. Um, in compacted soil, we've shown you before where you can, you can actually make holes in it. When you're putting your bulbs in, even when you're digging down to put in something 12 inches deep, you can actually punch some holes in compacted layers to improve drainage. And you can add organic matter. We've been adding organic matter in this soil that was excessively drained. The water just ran through it. Um, we've double dug in in order to get the organic matter in deeper. Double digging, go to webinar number eight, you'll find in Earthwise Soil Prep, uh, a diagram that shows you double digging or here and show you pictures. You're going to dig a trench, take the soil out of that and set it aside, loosen the bottom of that trench, add organic matter, we're adding fall leaves. And then um, we do it with two people. I'm digging, she's loosening. And now I'm going to take the soil from the next trench, next furrow, and I'm going to put it on top of that organic matter. So I'm leaving the microbes on top where they belong in the aerified soil. And I'm getting the organic matter mixed in deeper. When we ran out of organic matter, and that's the only time that we use it, we're wetting peat, wetting it first. So it's tagged with peat, which is a pain in the butt and gets you dirty. It's hard to mix. But we're adding uh, peat, wet peat into this, the trench. And when we get to the last trench, we take the first soil that we've set aside and fill that last one and then smooth it out. So don't try to change the texture. Don't even, if people say I have clay, what do I do? You can't change clay in any really reasonable way. You can build on top of it. Um, so you can loosen the soil that's there and you can build up. So we've loosened the clay in blocks here and added compost on top of it. So you make a, a raised bed. 
we've added organic matter and then compost on top of that. And that can change your uh, your microbial activity. So we have that more balanced activity that you got there. Um, you can till in organic matter or lime. We I tell people, don't put lime. We've got a lot of calcium in the soils in Michigan already. Um, you can just loosen and smother and build up. And how much smothering can you do? We've smothered with as much as eight inches of loose, airy stuff. And I think we've ended up with a good microbial mix because the soil is active. No, we didn't bury the soil, the tree deep. It was already buried deep, you guys. I know you know about this. In this soil, we loosened, except for the paths. We didn't loosen the paths. And once we loosened it, we added every leaf we could find in the neighborhood and then uh, compost on top of that. And you can add nutrients. So you're going to look at the soil test results for NPK and say, I need a three, four, four fertilizer. And you start reading packages, five, 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 two, four, three. You're looking for one that matches your result. 1300 and a 1077. I mean, you're reading the packages. Every one of them by law has to tell you that NPK. And if you want to know um, how much fertilizer to use, so for instance, this 500 square foot bed, I use 20 pounds of 555. And we've given you several places in our, on our website and in former webinars where we show you how to do these tests and give you, there's a Excel spreadsheet you can put in your fertilizer and it'll tell you how much coverage you can get from that. Or you can figure out which fertilizers you need to get a specific uh, thing. Those are the extra um, links that are on the on the uh, website. So uh, we're not going to talk about detoxifying, but we can talk about improving soil now with Brent, uh, uh, with Brent Crane and with any questions that you've got. Sonia, can we keep on going for a few minutes?